All right, so so you're this is what's you have all this momentum happening in yeah. your life. Yeah. And walk me through the day. Yeah, so um I was I was out um elk hunting. Um you know, as a uh, the the chef, there's a there's a part of me um as a chef that loves to know where my food comes from, whether it's the carrots in my in my garden or whether it's, you know, an animal-based protein, like I want to know, I want to know more of the story about it and I want to be involved in that. So hunting is, has always been a part of my life. Um, and, uh, I, it's interesting, you know, I, as a hunter, I often prior to a harvest, take a moment to connect with the animal in life and, the, and, and just, you know, I don't need to make this sound all woo woo, but mm -hmm. In the hey, hunt, man, you're talking to a vegan, so yeah, yeah, yeah. well, you know, but in I don't know who's listening, and I just want to you a lot know, of vegans, listening. yeah, so a lot it, of other people, too. So, but I, I, but I, so I do this when I, you know, like I, I'm putting a garden in, um, on Saturday, so when I get home tomorrow, I'm gonna be in the garden all day. So, even when I'm pulling a plant up, is it thinking about it? Like, is this strawberry ready? Has it done its thing? Is this, is, have I over harvested this asparagus patch? Like, whatever it is. So, anyway, the morning I'm out hunting, I pass. On an animal, I decide not to harvest that animal for my reasons, and I end up resetting. What was it about? Like did something just didn't feel right to you? It, you know, I I had um, I had kind of told myself I want to harvest this. I want to harvest a a, a younger um, a younger cow elk or you know a younger um, female elk, not what I saw in front of me that day, which was this huge, beautiful male elk, mm -hmm. which 99% of hunters around the world would be like, why in the heck didn't you, you know, wasn't what I wanted. And I think intention, right reason, right motive, right cause, like intention is huge. You, you know, like and it, that wasn't my intention for that day. So although I could have been seduced by how big and beautiful this thing looked, no. Um, so I decided to keep going hiking later on in the afternoon and I come across a, I'm, I'm just to put this in perspective for everyone, I'm in a valley at about 5,000 feet and I'm heading from the sage sort of valley floor, winding my way three miles up into the conifer or evergreen forest. Mm -hmm. And within those, that forest, there's, we're still, you know, everything is sloped, you know, gentle rolling up. And, um, I'm in a little drainage, small, small drainage. And I, I see a can, like literally a 50 gallon oil drum cut in half on the ground. And curious, I walk up to it, and when which I, is a weird thing to see, which is a weird, nowhere, right? which is a weird thing to see, except um, you know, except in the Rocky Mountain West, and even in many parts of California here, there is a lot of detritus. There's a lot of leftover mining camp, sheep camp, uh, homestead junk out in the woods from our predecessors, you know, from the folks that were here before us, and I just assumed. Like that's an old Campsite, camp right? something, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and I look inside and, and there's what literally just envision a black toupee, everybody with like a claw or two and some bone, you know, the size of like a volleyball, like deflated. That's what I see in the bottom of this can. And I'm like, what the heck is that? You know, and growing up, you know, a, a student of the outdoors, I mean, I've picked up every feather. I've checked out every animal dropping, like, you know, I study it all. And so I think, huh. That's interesting. And part of me thinks, well, it looks like a very, like two to three year old dead, like been here for three years, dead baby bear cub or something. And so I pull a knife off my right hip and I put it in my left hand. And my plan is just to take a claw off, just like you would harvest, you know, a, a interesting branch or something that's, you know, fallen. And, and I'm going to take the claw and you know, put it in a curiosity case or make it a necklace or give it to my friend who works at the Boy Scouts and is always collecting to teach with, you know? And, um, I mean, I don't even get within 15 inches of the base of this can before 2,400 volts of electricity arcs into the tip of the knife I'm holding and into my body. You didn't even touch it. Mm -mm. It just jumped at the metal. It arced into it. I'd arced it. And it's interesting. I had both hands going down into this barrel. I'm on my knees. I'm leaning over. I have both hands. And, you know, because, like, the knife is going to pop the cloth, and the right hand right. is going to pick it up and teamwork. And um, what's interesting is 
had I not been holding that knife, like nothing would have happened. But that knife curated uh, the conduit for that electricity to jump. Wow. Out so of had it. you just had you touched it with your hand though, you it would have conducted the electricity, wouldn't it? Have? Or was it? It was you had to have metal in your. Yeah, hand. I think it was the metal. And so what? What? What was going on was there was a there was a, a uh, an exposed power cord beneath the tank. It was a right? bar- It was a buried line that was going to a backcountry cabin, and this can was sitting on sort of a point where the line had like it was a it was a ground junction access mm-hmm. point, and the <clears throat> lid had many you know. And so what I come to understand you know and what I can share is that you know this junction box had been compromised by weather and neglect and time and was not maintained and the lid became unsecure and fell off it should have never been exposed i mean it should have been labeled and fenced and the whole thing so um you know in that moment i knew none of this so in that moment i mean how would you think like better not touch that like there's there might be an exposed wire underneath i mean you would would never occur to you contrary it's it's you you know the the only thought would be should i touch that it looks gross Mm-hmm. Like that's the thought, you know? Yeah. Um, so how many volts? 2,400. 2,400 volts. Yeah. And does it just hurl you? Like what, ha- what happens? So I, w- so I wake up, right. So I wake up on, uh, on my back staring. I wake up staring at the clouds and treetops. And I, you know, I, I, at this point, all I know is that I'm staring at the clouds. Did you know that you were electrocuted? And no. like, what did it feel no, like? In that, no, in that moment... And the moment I got electrocuted, it was like someone had inserted me into inside the speaker cable of like a Yes concert or something. It was just straight up electronic symphony in the back of my head with heat, with, with like the gentle, warm flood of heat. Um, lights out, my eyes open up. I don't know how many minutes later and I, I see clouds and dappled blue sky and, and treetops. And, uh, and I think to myself, get up, like, get up. What are you doing? And I roll over and I'm on my knees and my hands, hands and knees. And I say, get to your feet. And then, so this is all I remember is just talking to myself to mm-hmm. get stand up. And I must've stood up and I'm next to this barrel, all my gear, my backpack, my bow, my things. And the next memory I have is just me is, is the next memory I have is of the sound of gravel. And I'm, I'm on a dirt road. I'm no longer in the trees. I'm no longer next to that can. I don't have any of my things with me except in my right hand, I'm holding a can of bear spray and my left hand, I look down at it and it, is blackened and burnt and wow. seized into like a claw shape, you know? Right. And, and what's the pain? Like you Not feeling existent. anything or are you no. just in this weird adrenaline? Yeah. Like no dream mode, total, dream to, yeah. total dream mode. Um, total dream mode. I mean, I, 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 I s- gathered where I was. Okay. I'm in this part. I'm, I'm in this Valley. This I'm walking downhill. Why am I walking downhill? Why is my hand black? And then, of course, like, oh, yeah, I saw, like, I saw that dead, like, dead baby bear. I went to get a claw. I put a knife. And then it's like, oh, man, Mm -hmm. that noise, that heat. Did I get a? I must have got zapped. I mean, we've all been zapped through static electricity or the random one time where you get a little too close to something and it, you know, like zaps you back. And I think, again, life experience, those small little tidbits of being in touch with electricity in my life definitely all of a sudden come full center. I'm like, wow, I think you actually just received, I think you just got electrocuted like bad. Uh And now I take account. Now, now my head's on a, swivel and I look and I look at the hand and it's grotesquely disfigured and black and gripped into a claw. I look at my leg on my left thigh and I see that my pants are black and I kind of poke a finger through there and I can see it's just charred flesh Mm -hmm. and I don't have to look anymore. Now I realize that I am walking down this road to get help. And this was a subconscious decision I made when I was no, like not in my body. Yeah. Like your unconscious mind just went into survival mode without any memory of that. A hundred percent. No one, I don't, I don't think we remember the day that 
the day, the moment we're born and take our first breath outside of our umbilical cord, yeah. you know, but it happens. And how do we know to do that? That's the miracle. We're just genetically wired to do it. Yeah. So do you have like a sat phone or a cell phone? I, I would assume there's no service or anything like that. Like you're way out backcountry, right? The cell phone, the keys to the truck, the water, the all, first aid kit. It's all back at the... It's all, it's all on the <laughs> ground. And how far are you from like civilization yeah. or help? I'm about three miles. Um, I mean, I've gone back to the site many times. I've retraced all these uh-huh. things. I mean, I'm about three miles from where I received help. And and what's what's just interesting is that I'm carrying my bear spray. I, I, somehow in that collected moment of getting to my feet and leaving the site, I make a decision to not carry anything but bear spray. Like, mm. just think about that for a second. Yeah, that's, it's, it's, that's like, it's like anyone ever packed for that trip where you're running out of time and you need to get out the door by this time or you will not make your flight or something and you just have to decide what to take and what not to take. It's like triage. It's like, I just got to get there. 